John, what are you doing? I'm busy. I'll be there in a minute. Here we are, John from Whitewater Vans with the great toilet showdown of 2023. So we're gonna look at these toilets and I'm gonna tell you what's good and bad about each one and which one I use in my vans. You might have seen this in some of the previous videos. Spoiler alert, it's not the, these expensive ones. Quick commercial break. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, drop a comment down below and help me reach my goal. Thanks, I hope you enjoy this video. We're gonna start with this guy here. This is a Dometic, it's a five gallon. It's what I've used for two or three years. And it's a great toilet. What's great about it, pros and cons, this toilet works like a normal toilet, like you would normally expect. You fill it with water right here in the top. So the top part is filled with water and you use it like a toilet and then you flush it. So you can pump it up a little bit and when you're ready to flush, you hit a button and the water comes from this upper tank, flows down into the bottom. You open the bottom flap, which opens up a flap and your waste drains down into the black water tank below. You close it up and you're good to go. There's a little bit of a seal there that this flap slides across to help prevent like odors and things from that great, that black tank from coming up into the van. Like I said, I used this for years they cost about $150, and it's a great, I'll call it a starter toilet, or a forever toilet, as long as you understand a couple of gotchas. So, the gotchas is a couple things. One, it's got water in it. So, if your toilet is going to be in your van in the wintertime, when it's freezing, you need to think about winterizing your toilet just like the rest of your van. If the water in here freezes, then you're going to have water problems, water or waste or something, or a broken toilet all over your floor. So just make sure that you pay attention to freezing temperatures and the fact that there's water. Um, I no longer use this toilet. I moved on to this one and I'm gonna talk about why. So it was 110 degrees in the summertime and we were on a rafting trip. We had used this toilet and then we went rafting for a week and it was 110 every day. And when we got back in the van, it reeked really, really bad for days. So this has that black tank. And if it gets really hot, it can start to smell. So I'm not saying these smell all the time, but you need to pay attention to the fact that it can smell, especially when it gets hot. Last thing I want to mention, this is a, a, a user experience thing. And if you have one of these, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this unless you've already done it. So it's very important when you use this toilet, when you get to where you're going, you drive around in your van and you get to where you're going, you crack this very gently and close it again and then you use your toilet. Because when you drive up into the mountains, for example, you're at a higher altitude, which is lower pressure. Your black tank is now a pressurized tank. And so you get to, up in the mountains and you use the toilet and you fill it with pee. And then you, you bend over your toilet like this to flush it and you pop that back. Would you like to guess what happens with a pressurized tank over a bunch of pee? Yeah, <laughs> it's a pee bomb. that just goes straight into your open mouth and your eyes and your nose and your hair and your clothes. So, great toilet, uh, use it carefully. I left this toilet because of the smell. And I went to this guy, this is a dry flush toilet. So it has a couple of benefits. To start with, there's no water. So when we use this toilet, I don't have to fill it with water. I don't have to worry about water freezing. But the reason I came to this toilet was because of the smell and I didn't want to smell. And I'll tell you right off the bat, this toilet doesn't smell. It's great for all of those reasons, the water, the hot temperatures, the cold temperatures, and the smell. This, this is a Laveo dry flush, and it works amazing. Uh, I don't have it in here right now, but there's um, a, a cassette insert that goes in here, and it works like a diaper genie. It's just a, a long tube that's kind of tucked on the bottom, 
and you do your business, poop or pee or trash, and you put it in there and you hit this flush button and it sucks the air out and compresses it down into a bag and it spins it so it's all you know spun up into a knot so that no air gets in or out and then it sucks it down into a fresh bowl. I'll put a link to the Labeo website where you can see some videos of them using it and flushing it. But it's a great system. This toilet costs about a thousand bucks and it's a wonderful addition to have in a van for the reasons I just mentioned. I no longer use this toilet. I'm going to tell you why. So they all have some pros and cons. Those set inserts that go into here, they cost on the order of, I don't know, 50 bucks per cassette and you get about 25 flushes. So you're looking at approximately two bucks per flush. So there's a cost issue there. Initially, I thought, well, I don't need to worry too much about that because we don't use our toilet in the van for poop all that often. A lot of people just go, they'll go into restaurants, gas stations, you know, wherever you might happen to be on your travels. And this is more for an emergency. And that's what I thought it would be for. And then we went on a trip and I forgot that there's another use of the toilet besides poop. We do it all the time. It's called pee. And while this is perfectly fine for pee, it works great for pee, it gets a little expensive when you're paying two bucks every time you pee 10 times a day. Uh, and also, uh, obviously pee is more of a liquid. So now you're dealing with more of a liquid trash situation that you have to take care of. Um, so between all of those things, I went looking for a better solution. And oddly enough, we're now into buckets. I know. It's the lowest cost, cheapest solution. This is a five gallon bucket with a $20 toilet seat lid that sits over the top. But let me tell you why this is awesome. So first of all, what many guys will do is simply use a, a pee bucket, a pee container, a pee jug for pee all day, every day. And that's great. It's not as easy for women. You can use funnel, you know, for men or for women to make that a little bit easier. And pee jugs are a great way to go, but they're a little, you know, on the messier and the cheap side. What I like to do is use the combination of these two. So I've got my pee jug in my bucket with a lid and it closes down and it goes into my toilet container. And when my wife or I, or males or females need to pee, we simply pee and it goes into the bucket. The funnel works great. Uh, and for those 10 times a day at random times in the middle of the night, it becomes extremely easy to pee. I don't have to worry about, you know, aiming into a small container. Uh, men and women just works just as easy. And when you do have to poo, probably those uh, more emergency times, we have, set that down so it doesn't fall over, we have uh, just plastic bags. So you can get these poop bags. They cost pennies per use and you simply take a poop bag you can see where I'm going with this and you open it up and you pop it in there and I can now do my business I use this more slightly for emergencies but it works great I can I can put some trash in there I can do my business in there toilet paper and everything else goes right in there I simply take the top Twist it up, throw a knot, and it's ready for the garbage, the next garbage I come to on the road. If you're at all worried about it, use a second bag, costs a couple pennies, it's not a big deal. So it's a great, it's a great solution for pee, which you're going to need all day, every day. And it's a good solution for poop, which you need occasionally. It's lightweight and it's low cost. So this was 150 this one's about a thousand and this costs about $35 for the whole thing with easily replaceable components. Now you can get variations of this that are sort of pre-made. This is a stand sport, but it's kind of the same thing. It's a plastic bucket. You can see inside here, it just has sort of a, a receptacle. Um, it's a nice system. I like this uh, sort of homemade version better. 
the pee is just going to go in your bucket. So you're going to have to dump that into some sort of container that you can put a lid on anyway. And you can still, you're still going to use that plastic bag solution for those times that you So you've got the plastic bag and you've got a solution for pee. I like the milk jug idea so I can just put a cap on it when I'm driving around. Lastly, if you really want to save a couple of bucks, you can just get yourself a bucket, a Home Depot bucket. And it's kind of a similar solution. You can use a funnel or not. You can use your milk jug or plastic container with a little screw on lid to help it from, you know, if, you, if it were to fall over or spill. And you've got a simple solution. Put your plastic bag over there when you need to do number two and you're good to go. So a variety of solutions, a variety of costs associated with those solutions. This one right here, this is what I've started to use because my wife and I pee all day, every day, and all night, and this one works better for pee. And I don't have to worry about filling it with water, and I don't have to worry about carrying around poop. I don't have to worry about any of that. We just have a solution that works. Low cost, easy to maintain, easy to use. So I'm curious your thoughts, your comments. What other systems do you use in your vans? Which ones would you want to pick? Ask me if there's some questions about these that you have um, that I didn't cover. I might have forgot something. So hit me up in the comments or questions down below. Happy to answer anything you got. Thanks.